And we are back and we are live and we are on the home stretch here Indeed. at the AWS Sydney Summit. Welcome to Twitch TV. I'm your host, Dean Samuels, and we're joined, of course, as always, with my co-host here, Mr. Peter... Doc Thanks, oh, sorry, Dr. Pete Stansky. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. P, as we like to call him. Very privileged today to be also joined by one of our technical account managers, one of the go-to guys to help support a lot of our enterprise customers, Elgin Lamb. Thank you. Elgin, uh, I attended your uh, lightning talk at our Dev Bytes uh, uh, lounge over here. Yes. And you had a very unique use case that you actually took us through. I heard a lot about grandmas and recipes and authentication and coding. Can you talk, give, you, give us a little bit of a background about you know what your presentation was all about and what sure. you're going to take us through today? Sure. So I don't know about you guys, but my grandma, she really likes to cook. And over the course of many years, she's actually accumulated many recipes, um, many recipes that, sh that she's um, found very valuable and very many delicious recipes. So she also likes to code. So my grandma can cook and code. And we like to eat. And we all like to eat. So, so can we call it enterprise grandma? <laughs> she's enterprise yeah, grandma. Okay. Well, so, cook, cooks and codes. Cooks and cooks codes. And codes. Yes. So two C's. Okay. <laughs> so grandma stored her recipes in a uh, website, and she's managed to uh, de develop this website. But she's unfortunately forgotten to add authentication and authorizations to this website. Oh, that's, that's, that's bad news. That's bad news, Why yes. such a secret, though? I mean, recipes, you want to share that with everyone, right? It is, but some recipes are secret that have been handed down through many generations, right. and we want to make sure that those recipes are protected. Right. What, what's your favorite? It is brownies. Brownies, right. yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Everyone's favorite. Yeah, everyone's favorite. <laughs> so the problem is really grandmas uh, found that people have been stealing her recipes, and today I really wanted to make sure that um, we, were, we showed a way that we could lock down her, her website using her technology stack that she's chosen, which is .NET, um, .NET Core specifically, and C Sharp, which is the language that she's chosen to which write. Which version? Uh, 2.0. 2 so she's, she's really at the bleeding edge here. She right. is, All yes. Right. So, so Elgin, can you take us through maybe the architecture that your coding grandma uh, designed? Um, and just uh, a word for the viewers at home, the actual brains trust will be on the right-hand side of the stage here. You'll actually, I can actually feel the heat emanating from the mines here. Only because I'm a Linux guy, I'm an infrastructure guy, we're going to be talking a little bit about .NET and uh, programming, and these are the two guys that really know their Business. We love coding, don't we? <laughs> we do, yeah. yes. But let's 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 take a look at the architecture. Take us through. Sure. So um, the application is a single page application that's hosted on S3. And we're gonna be showing you how to use JWT to, uh, tokens to actually lock down the uh, website. And then, so what's JWT, by the way, for those of us that may not be familiar with that terminology? So JWT stands for JavaScript Web Tokens, right. and they can be used, uh, they're commonly used to basically lock down um, a front-end application. Got it. Right. So we're gonna be issuing tokens via a token endpoint, and we're passing through those tokens into a recipe endpoint, written in API, uh, basically an API gateway endpoint, and then we're going to be using a custom authorizer to validate those tokens. Okay. And that API gateway endpoint is um, backed by a Lambda function. And those delicious recipes are actually being um, stored in a RDS uh, MySQL database. Okay. So, the, so we're focusing, just to re re recap, on the bottom part of this, the custom um, author authorization aspect? That's right. Right, cool. Yes. So it's a validation, making sure it is the right token, it hasn't expired, all those key elements to ensure that when you actually provide that special hidden token That's in right. JavaScript, that it's actually valid. That's right. Perfect. Well, Elgin looks like your coding grandma can architect as well. Does this pass the well-architected uh, uh, test? I'd like to have her on my solution, architecture team Dean. Right, <laughs> I don't right, know about you. Right. Hey, hey, I'm looking for grandma who can also cook. Hong Kong's got the better food anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get so, back to the story. Yeah, okay. let's um, let's maybe look at a demo. Do you have sure, a demo sure. that you can show us? Yep. Yeah. So, so we're going to turn, turn this into a freestyling session of code. Yep. <laughs> All right, take it away. All right, so this is a website. This, as, I, as I mentioned before, this is Grandma's Recipes, um, and this is where she's been um, storing her recipes. And you click on the recipes, you get you know, all the recipes that you want. Okay. You've got chicken parma, you've got sp spac ball. I want to see the brownies. Where's the brownies? Um, <laughs> yeah, you get brownies at some point. Um, okay. So, yeah, as you can see, this is the problem. You, we basically don't have the ability to lock this down. So what we want to do is open Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio is uh, a Microsoft um, integrated development environment. And we've got our um, project, our solution, actually set up. Um, the Recipes API is our um, project that we've set up 
it's got a single uh, controller there, and the um, the controller's got a single method, get, and that get method is serving out all those delicious recipes. So, Alvin, what's, what's the, what does the controller actually mean for some of our viewers? Okay, so... We're talking about... You know, MVC programming models, right? That's Model right. view controller. What does that actually mean? So the controller is used to decouple uh, the application logic from the views. Okay, which, um, is, which is what you see. That's right, right from which, what you see. And the model, um, which is um, the actual data structures. Right. Yep. And the controller the application logic, right? That's yeah, right. perfect. Yes. Got it. So this is our, our very simple get method. Um, but what we, what we really want to do is we want to look at the actual token um, issuing um, service. So this is our recipes API.tokens method. And this is, again, a very simple uh, get method, which is actually issuing out tokens to the front end, which is written in, um, in JavaScript. Now, it's got a single get method. And that single get method has uh, it expects a password being passed in in the body of the request. Okay. Now, in a real world scenario, you probably would use something a bit more complex, like a username uh, password or yeah. federated authentication or cognito user pools. Okay. Um, so, but in this very simple demonstration, we're just passing in a single password, and we're going to be issuing um, a JWT security token and returning it um, via the response. Right, so nicely. So basically, you put in the actual password, we then create this token and send it back to the actual consumer, right? That's right, Great. yes. So once the front end has that token, um, it's in then important for the token to be validated yeah. before the API accepts any calls. Right. So this is where our custom authorizer comes in. So we've got a Lambda function here which serves as our custom authorizer. So, and Lambda is what? Uh, Lambda is our uh, functions as a service, right. uh, which is you know uh, which is uh, issued by which is by AWS, mm -hmm. and uh, we can actually write functions that run in the cloud without a server or the serverless. So, we've got our AWS Lambda. Um, function here written in C sharp mm -hmm. and it takes a request and it ex and it re expects a response now in there I've re I've put oh grandma's actually put a few to do's for me okay. so I can see that she's put a few things for me to fill so she's in she's not quite done yet so she's not quite done okay, yet right. so I think um, because uh, her brownies were actually getting burned so she has actually left a few things for me to complete so I'm going to try and complete this for her and then do a build and make sure it works all right, let's okay. do it. Let's Sounds do it. Good. All right, no pressure. Like pressure. No, no pressure. Typers. No pressure. Right. Yeah. So the first thing that she's asked me to do is add an issue is signing key. Now, okay. what this is actually doing is, it's where I'm using a shared security library between the issuer and the validator. Okay. So if you think about a symmetric key, it has to be shared between the issuer and the validator. Because if the keys are not the same, we're going to have a problem. There's not going to be the ability to validate that the keys are correct. Got it. Right? So I'm going to be doing issuer so signing key. as you're key. typing here, you're getting IntelliSense popping up, right? That is, is that's right. Of Visual Studio's nice way of actually helping you to, uh, to really quickly code. It looks at your source and that's right. pops up some recommendations. All right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm very impressed. Grandma could actually write these things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, there's a lot of IntelliSense. So you know, with her age um, getting on, it really helps with the less less typing. Plus, the bigger fonts helps her to see better, right? That's right. right. Yes. <laughs> All right. So she's left me another to do there, which is the actual validation of the token. Okay. So we have um, we've set up some parameters there, which help us to actually set up what we're trying to do. But right. the, the actual validation of the token actually hasn't been done. So we actually have a class there called the JWT Security Token Handler, okay. which is a built-in class um, from Microsoft, because we never want to try and roll our own security classes. We want to try and use um, classes that have been uh, industry-supported. Yeah, the framework-based, yeah. And That's it's a right. fairly rich set of uh, libraries that uh, actually come with .NET, right, for That's a whole right. bunch of these things. And uh, ASP.NET 2.0, so CLR 2.0, has had a great deal of improvements, actually, in this space recently. That's right, yeah. yes. So what we want to do is validate the 
token. Okay. You're just in your element right now, aren't you, Dr. Pete? You're just loving this. You know, this, like, this coding this stuff, coding you know? in real time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you flip through the infrastructure and code. Yeah. You're like a kid in the candy store. Yeah, it's like, just fun. Yeah. <laughs> I spent many, many years in my unmisspent youth writing assembly language. Right. So uh, working in C Sharp is, uh, is, is so awesome. All righty. We're almost there. Okay. So what we've actually done now is we've actually validated the token, or we've attempted to validate the token, and pass back the user. Right. Um, now, if the token is, va is valid, then the, the user is actually being set uh, based on the claim got that the, the, um, the, the user is valid. Okay, got it. All right. So now let's move on back down and see if the grandma has actually set anything back. Now, we, she's actually set us one last to do, which is, which is actually to set the IAM policy statement. And what, what does that all mean? So when you actually create a custom policy, or, sorry, a custom authorizer, you actually have to return an IAM policy statement, okay. which actually tells um, the custom authorizer or tells uh, API Gateway whether or not you allow the user to invoke um, specific um, permissions. Right? Permissions, yes. Got it. So okay. that's what we're trying to do here. So, so you've done all the validation, you've got the token. Yes, it's a real user that we trust. We're now going to tell API Gateway, please allow this user to continue through to the Lambda function, right? That's right. Got it. Yes. And okay. there's the policy. That's right? the policy. That's the IAM policy. Now, the effect is either if we are authorized, it's going to be allow. If not, it's going to be deny. Okay. And resource. So that's shortcut. For those that are watching, that's a shortcut. So the <laughs> audience using the, uh, yeah. the abbreviated notation. That's right. So that's what that. we call a um, that's a ternary notation. Um, extra new string. And lastly, we're going to do API gateway request. Now, the last part, what we're actually doing is we are passing the ARN of the API gateway. Um, that the user is trying to access. Okay, and the ARN, the Amazon resource name of the Lambda function, right? Uh, right of, the of the API endpoint, right. that's got right. It, yeah. So we're actually letting, uh, telling API Gateway that, hey, the user is actually allowed to then access this. Right. All right. All right. We've got some so questions coming up. Dean, you want to just check the, uh, the live feed? Switch over while you're doing that, while we go for the code. So we have a uh, question from uh, uh, Draws with Kittens. Hello, Draws with Kittens. Hey. Uh, Draws with Kittens asks us, what is an issuer? What wow, is an issuer? okay. So the issuer is actually used to, um, to actually validate the domain name of where the, um, the user is actually coming from. So in this case, yes, you can see, I've actually, I'm not sure if you can see but the font's a little bit small. The, the, the issuer, um, as you can see, is a valid issuer is actually grandmas.recipes.info. So, um, so, that's, so that's a host name, if you like, the DNS. It is, record, yeah, right? it is a DNS host name. That's how you make name. sure, because you don't want to have, you know, authorized for the wrong thing. You don't want to say you're authorized to access dub, 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 something else.com. Right? That's right, yeah. yes. Right. And so I've noticed, noticed a few things here, Elgin. You're logged into a Windows machine. Yes. You're using your favorite uh, IDE, I'm assuming. Uh, you're running. You're writing in your C Sharp and .NET uh, Core uh, uh, platform. So would you say that Microsoft is a first-class citizen on AWS? Absolutely. So you know, with Microsoft, we've got um, you know you can run production workloads on EC2. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of marketplace products that are supported, uh, Microsoft vendor uh, marketplace products that are supported on EC2 and, and AWS. We've also got SQL Server that's uh, fully supported on AWS as well. We've, we had uh, .NET Core being supported on Lambda in December 2016, yep. and in February of this year, we supported .NET Core 2.0. Yeah. So as you can see, it's not just a one-soft uh, support for Microsoft workloads on AWS, but it's a pattern of support of, for features and tools on uh, AWS. So, right. so Elgin, let's get down and dirty here. Yeah. I like performance and the runtimes, and .NET's a good example of that. So, so how, how does the .NET performance rank in terms of Lambda? 
So sure. they support Go, we support a whole bunch of you know, Node, and we support C Sharp. How fast is it to actually run serverless with .NET? So um, independent testing has actually um, proven or shown that .NET Core 2.0 right. actually r runs faster than a lot of other runtimes on, awesome. on AWS Lambda. Um, and as for cold starts, it's actually comparable to other statically compiled languages like uh, Java. Right, so speaking of compilation, so you essentially, this, this application is a model view controller implementation. Yes. Um, so do you compile this at runtime? Do you, does it get compiled before you upload it? How do you get that maximum performance boost? So if I'm a .NET developer in C Sharp and I want to go serverless with my application, because we also support hosting an entire websites, right? Yes. NBC sites inside Lambda. So yes. I'd love to know, you know, what are you going to do? How do you get sure. maximum boost performance? So the best um, way to do it will be to use our tooling, like right. AWS uh, Toolkit for Visual Studio. Um, so AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio actually allows you to deploy uh, serverless applications right from yes, it's a plug -in um, for Visual Studio. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah it's yeah. right from Visual uh, the comfort of your IDE. So from right from Visual Studio, um, you can actually it actually helps you to compile. Um, and publish and zip up all those uh, all your serverless all applications, yeah. and it goes straight into uh, AWS. Okay, so, so we do all the heavy lifting for you from what yeah, I that's that's right. I guess the moral of the story is that uh, you can still use the same familiar tools, same familiar development environment that you're, you're used to. You spoke about Visual Studio, but I'm assuming there's other about IDEs, for example, that you could potentially use, whether it's on your Mac, whether it's on your Linux machine, whether it's on your Windows hey, Visual Studio now runs well. on the Mac, by the way. Yeah, that's that right. haven't noticed. Yeah. Do you use that? Uh, yes. I do. Um, so you actually can use um, the uh, uh, Visual Studio on a Mac. Now uh, you can. Al we also have support for the AWS um, uh, CLI. Yeah. So you can also use the CLI on a Mac with Visual Studio for Mac, uh, which to to achieve a lot of the things that the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio does. Oh, there yep. you go. So if you got a Mac, great, go play. Great learning. Go yeah, play. So there's uh, you know a wide variety of tools that we can use. We can integrate the .NET uh, into our AWS uh, uh, services across Lambda and and, and others. Elgin was definitely a great learning experience for me and learned a lot. Uh, I know you were cutting code there and I was picking up a few things. I, I'm, a, I'm a gun shell programmer. <laughs> I was but, leaving my youth here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? But um, thanks again for the insights no there. I um, uh, really do appreciate it. Dr. Pete, it's thanks been so a great much. day. It's been fun. Yeah. It's been a long day, but Fantastic we've really day. had a lot of fun. Looking forward to tomorrow, though. We're uh, back here, same same place, different time tomorrow. Make sure you tune in uh, to at, at tune in tomorrow for more insightful uh, information from AWS Sydney Summit. Cool.